Greetings and salutations. My name is Michael Schwann and welcome to the channel. We have some more reaction content for you and today we are checking out Warhammer 40k Dark Tide, the official gameplay trailer from Summer Games Fest. Now, I have seen a little bit about this because the first time this game was shown off wasn't at Summer Games Fest. I think it was at like the Game Awards last year and I was like, ooh, what's that? It is the Warhammer 40k version of Vermintide, which is the Warhammer fantasy version of Left 4 Dead. So we're just taking these very well-known, very beloved settings and adapting a known gameplay formula and putting it into those world settings. I played both Vermintide and Vermintide 2, and I enjoyed them to a point. They had some problems, but the general presentation, feel, and gameplay of them were, were enjoyable. I liked them a lot. Uh, there was some progression points in terms of like making you want to replay it, but that's a conversation for another time. I personally like Warhammer 40k more than I like Warhammer Fantasy. Don't get me wrong, I love Flintlock Fantasy as a genre. Flintlock Fantasy is a fantastic thing. I love it, it's so freaking cool, and Warhammer Fantasy is a very stellar example of it. But just something about the, the gritty, grim, dark universe of Warhammer 40k is just, it, it's on a new level compared to a lot of the other things that are even trying to be comparable to it. And so we now have Warhammer 40k Dark Tide, which is going to be taking us through this horde based combat. And I'm excited to genuinely see more of what this game has to offer. So with that said, let's, uh, let's just, let's just start playing it. Welcome in Cerulean. I haven't seen gameplay yet. This is just there. You go. I just had to bitch. That 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 that's how you solve these problems. Oh. Looks sick. That's the first part done. Get to the base of the matrix bar and put those cryonic rods to work. What are you waiting for? Get it in place. Now. You finished here? Look for a way out. Like a Nurgle demon there. Rejects will rise. Pre-order now available September 13th, 2022. Okay, so couple of notes here. One thing, like, I, I, I was hoping with this game that they would do... I don't know what enemies I wanted them to do. Because, for instance, in Warhammer Fantasy, you fought... I can't remember the name of the rat folk. I can't remember their name, but that was the enemy for both games was you were fighting all the ratkin and it was cool. But at a certain point, you're like, I would like a different enemy type. And it, it, it doesn't feel the same when you're playing a game like Left 4 Dead or Back 4 Blood or World War Z or Zombie Army 4 because those are zombie games. And that's what those are. They are zombie games. Skaven. Thank you, Athena. Whereas in Warhammer... They are Warhammer games. They are not zombie games. They are Warhammer games. And in Warhammer, there is a massive swath of foes that you could be facing. And so, like, with the Skaven and Vermintide and Vermintide 2, you're like, these are cool, but I'd really like to fight some Chaos Demons, you know? And you could have a whole bunch of different Chaos Demons. And looking in, like, Warhammer Dark Tide, it's like, okay, so we got Chaos. That's cool. and But these are a bunch of, you know, like, corrupted humans that are effectively acting like zombies, where are, like, my 
Oh crap! And of course, my my brain is just emptying of all of the enemies. What what are they called? The the freaking hive mind, horrible murder monsters. <laughs> oh no! I can see them. I can see all of them, but I can't think of their names. I even thought about it before watching this video. Humans? Oh wait, no, no. The Oh, crap. Tyranids. Thank you, Athena. You're the best. I appreciate you. Like, I would have liked to have seen some Tyranids, you know? Fight a Carnifex. Maybe not, actually. That would leave that to Space Marines. Don't fight a car Don't cut Carnifex bad. But, you know, like, it, it, they're still just humanoid enemies, which makes this still feel so much along the same lines Thanks. as what else you might have, right? In terms of, like, a zombie game. Or, you know, make, let us fight some Eldar, although I don't want to fight Eldar as just, like, a normal dude, so maybe not. But you get what I'm getting at, right? I hope so. There's a lot of options beyond just zombified humans. Now, we could get some unique enemies in the form of, like, Nurgle demons, you know, because we did see one at the end there. And so, you know, who knows? Who knows? One other nice thing about this that makes me also very excited this is a day one Game Pass release, which means that I don't have to pay anything for it beyond my Game Pass subscription. We can load it up day one and just immediately start playing it. And that's awesome, by the way. Game Pass, I am not spawned, but I'll shill for it anyway. Greatest value in video gaming right now. Anyway, we'll see where it goes in the future. So, yeah, that looks cool. <laughs> you know, initially when I first saw the first trailer, I was like, Man, there's a big burly dude who's an Ogren, right? That's the big guy. And that's their own separate race. They're called Ogren. And then you also have, like, a guardsman, an inquisitor, and, like, a sister of battle or something in there. And it's like, okay, cool. But when I was talking about this with friends, they're like, man, who's going to really want to play the Ogren? The Ogren in there actually looked really badass because you are a hulking mass of muscle. And they uh, definitely made it feel like you are a hulking mass of muscle because you're watching him just you know get angry and just run and charge through the horde and that's cool that's cool i'm looking forward to this this looks great i i hope the progression is different from vermintide i'll explain that real quick so i don't know how this game will work but vermintide one and two they had a level and a gear system your character leveled up and you got some new little perks and stuff but the main form of progression was gear higher level gear at higher rarities and the way that you got gear was essentially a loot box you didn't have to pay for these loot boxes just at the end of a mission depending on your performance in terms of how well you did how much damage you take how many people survived if you found these rare collectibles if you made it out with the magic will guffin your box would upgrade Grade, which would give you a better chance of better loot which is fine like that that system doesn't bother me the, the problem that I had was is that all of the loot was all randomized and you could get any loot on any level so there was no point in like oh can we do level seven because I would really like to get this particular bow that drops from that level right Instead, it was like the first level, the first mission is the easiest, and I know where all the MacGuffins are on it, so we should just replay the first level over and over again because we know we can guarantee ourselves the highest possible loot chance on that level. Because it's like, I know this book is here, this book is here, I know how to deal with these enemies, this event happens here, we can get a perfect score, best chance for loot. There's no reason to play any other level if you're just trying to loot grind. Which made it feel bad to play other levels because there was no incentive to do so out of just choosing them for the sake of choosing something different. But if you were wanting to chase something better, you needed to just choose the level you were best at. And it, it hurt the experience immensely. Immensely. Because of that. If you're just like, well, I, I, would, I want better gear, so I'll just replay the first level. And or I, it was like the first level in Vermintide 1 and like the second level in Vermintide 2 were the best ones to play because they were the fastest, the easiest, and they were the easiest to accomplish the bonus objectives and shit. And it was like very disappointing. Everything else about them, really cool, really good. I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed the gameplay. Just that particular system was just... That one thing, that one thing, I didn't mind the random loot, I didn't mind the loot box style mechanic, I didn't mind trying to get the better boxes, I minded that 
just replaying the same level was the best way to get better gear. And I'm like, ah, that's disappointing. I don't know how this game is doing its progression. I don't know how it's doing levels or gear or anything like that. But I, I do genuinely hope that it is not that system. If it is that system, I'm probably going to play it once, maybe twice, if a different character really catches my attention. And then I'll probably never play it again. I'll definitely still get my enjoyment out of it. But it's a game and a style of game that I know has the potential to give me more enjoyment by just giving me more carrots to chase. But they need to be hung on the right sticks with the right string. Yeah. I would get way too bored doing that. I did. I did. I got way too bored doing that. So, yeah. <laughs> Work smarter, not harder for better stuff. Why not both? Work smarter and harder. Yeah. I play the campaign, but never after, I think, depending on the friends I play with. I might do it twice if another group friend wants to play. It... With these games specifically, I will speak for Vermintide, Vermintide 2, and and most likely Darktide with what we've seen here, is that they have a replayability that is very different from other games in this genre in that the characters are definitively different. And it's not just different classes, right? Like, we've been playing through World War Z recently, and it's like, a healer class. Well, what makes you special? I'm the same except for I get bonuses on med kits of, like, if I heal you instead of healing yourself, there's a chance that I won't use the med kit. I get to heal myself a little bit, too, and the med kit heals for more. But effectively, we're the same, right? We're exactly the same. Whereas in Vermintide 1 and 2 and Darktide, your characters are vastly different. Obviously, you're still trying to cut through the hordes and get to the objective, but we'll use Vermintide 1 as an example. You have a dwarf that is short, squatty, with, like, big honking weapons, right, because he's a big, strong guy. And, and he comes with, like, shotguns as his only type of gun. So you got big hammers, shotgun, and squatty boy that can't move very fast. And next to him is an elf. And the elf comes, and, and he has, you know, perks and stuff that involves all of those types of weapons and stuff. And next to him is an elf. And the elf exclusively comes with, like, like uh, long knives, essentially. Like, dual-wielding long knives and a bow. And then there's some slight variations in there, of course. And then they have their own powers within those, right? Like, we saw in there that there was, like, the Ogren who had a charge move. And then you also had, like, the Inquisitor. I'm guessing it was the Inquisitor, maybe. that Or a Psyker, maybe. Like, a sanctioned Psyker that had the ability to use, like, essentially magic in the f form of the world of for Warhammer 40k. They have significant differences between them to where if you play through it once then the second time if you choose a different character while it'll be the same missions it will feel different because your character classes have distinctive differences between them which does also give the game its own type of replayability in that sense. And then if the gear system is done well, if you want to, you know, we'll go back to Vermintide 1, you're like, all right, I played through the elf, I enjoyed the elf a lot, we leveled up the elf, but now I'm going to play as the Inquisitor. And the Inquisitor uses rapiers and pistols. I don't have any rapier or pistol gear, so we got to gear up this guy. And it's just, it's a fun loop, with the exception of how you get that gear. So, it's... It'll, it'll really depend on how the progression system works in Dark Tide, on how I'll ultimately feel about it, but I do hope that it is better, at least, than Vermintide and Vermintide 2, because it's a game that I could see myself wanting to play a lot. Twitch chat, right, I forgot that they added Twitch chat integration into Vermintide, where your Twitch chat was able to, like, spawn elites and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. But that said, that said, we're going to get out of here. What did you think? What do you think about Warhammer 40k Darktide? Or what has your experience been with Vermintide? I'd love to hear from you. Let's have a discussion. Leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Otherwise, if you want to keep the conversation elsewhere, two great places to do so are Discord and Twitter. And speaking of Discord, we actually have a channel dedicated to these reactions where you can place links of your own that we can watch together live on stream. Because we do stream four days a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. And I would love to see you there. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you want to catch future videos, please subscribe to the channel. But we're actually going to go check out something else. So if you watch one of the other videos on the channel or if I see you in the live stream, thank you and enjoy.